Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to the farm today. We're gonna be working inside the shop today. I've got a Zariba brand fence controller that has a burnt up circuit board. We're gonna go through and talk a whole lot about electric fences, different types of electric fence controllers, the experiences that I've had with electric fence controllers, and we're gonna show you how to fix one. So come along on the farm vlog today. We're gonna have a little bit of fun learning about electric fence controllers for your farm. All right? Woo! First of all, folks, I want to welcome you to the channel. Today we're in the shop. It's a nasty old rainy day. We've had a lot of nasty old rainy days this year. I want to talk to you a little bit about the experiences that I've had with fence controllers. Now, it might seem like I'm sponsored by Zariba fence controllers, but I'm not. I just bought Tractor Supply out of Zariba fence controllers when they went on sale. So Tractor Supply Company changed brands and they put this stuff on half price and I knew I'd need it for the rest of my life, so I just bought every one of them that they had just in case I might need them or a friend might need them. So sitting on the workbench here today, we have a 30 miles Zariba brand solar fence charger and we're gonna get into the guts. We're gonna learn a whole lot about that one today. We have a five mile one that you plug in to AC power. We have a 10 mile one that you plug into AC power. The five mile is 0.1 joules of output. The 10 mile is 0.5 joules of output. Now the joules is what the shocking power is of these machines. In other words, this one is five times more powerful than that one. That's something to think about when you have large livestock. Now the 30 mile solar fence controller is also 0.5 joules. As I step back over here, you'll see the Premier One fence brand. I am a huge fan of Premier One products and we'll get more into that as we go. This here is also a DC powered Zariba brand. This is a 15 mile and it puts out one joule. So that means 10 times more power than this guy right here. And basically you just hook it with these clamps onto a 12 volt battery, like a car battery or a deep cycle marine battery would probably be recommended. So the reason we're doing this video today is to educate you a little bit as to what your options are. If you're considering purchasing livestock, if you're using the Premier One fencing for your chickens to keep them in, it gives them a little zap to keep the chickens in, to keep your goats up, to keep your cows up. These are the things that you're gonna need to know about in order to do that. Now the jewels are very important. If you look at this one, the 0.1 jewels, it says it'll keep in dogs, rabbits and chickens. If you look at the one with 0.5, horses, cows, pigs, goats, dogs, chickens, cats, whatever you want to put in there. I don't know if you can put cats in an electric fence. I don't think you can. However, the jewels are very, very important. So the more powerful the jewels on your fence controller, the better it's going to work, the more effective it's going to be. You're not looking so much to shock the animal. You're looking to train the animal to stay off the fence, especially animals like pigs that can root and destroy fences really, really quickly. Animals will learn to respect that fence, and that's what you're looking for with an electric fence. A lot of folks think that they're cruel, that you're trying to shock or zap animals, or that they're leaning on it all the time, or that they're gonna get shocked. They learn really quickly that little strand of wire is something we gotta keep our eyes out for, and they learn to respect the fence. Pretty cool. Goats, especially, will learn that they can sneak around and get away from getting shocked by the fence by going under it really, really fast. So you really have to watch it. But one thing about fencing goats, and that's what we use these for, goats will get in trouble. They are just always in trouble. If you can build a fence and take a glass of water and throw it through the fence, the goats can get out. So let's get into the meat and potatoes. We're gonna take apart this 30 mile fence controller. I'm gonna show you how it all works inside and we're gonna replace the circuit board. Before we get into performing our circuit board ectomy right here, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about reliability of these two pieces of equipment. This is the Premier One brand. There'll be a link down in the video description to Premier One. You can check it out. You guys have probably all seen that electric poultry netting or electric goat netting or goat fencing. They also have fencing for your garden. They have all kinds of fun stuff. From a reliability standpoint, I'm finding the Premier One products to be much more reliable, much more adjustable, much more user-friendly, and a much better product for getting parts. I called Zariba about this 
circuit board issue that I had and I could not get the parts for it. They sent me around through 10 different loops to different repair shops in order to find parts for this thing for me to repair it. I ended up having to buy it through a secondary or tertiary medium instead of just going right to the company and saying, hey, here's the part I need, here's the part number, can you send it to me? <laughs> no, you can't. With Premier One, you can. You can get the company that makes them and they'll take care of you. That is very important. We have three Zariba brand controllers that are solar powered and two out of the three Zariba brand controllers have had malfunctions and I couldn't get parts for them. So that's something to really think about when you're considering making a purchase. These things are not cheap. Now the Zariba brand basically has a wire system and you just hook up two wires to these little leads right here, the green to the ground, and you need to have a ground rod in place, and the red to the fence. With the Premier One fencing, you have the same similar setup right here on the side. However, you have a ground clamp that comes with it. It's really, really handy. So this is a ground rod for moving a mobile fence like the Premier One fencing. Now, of course, you could hook this to a standard ground rod. The way this works is you hook this to the ground, little alligator clip, that to the fence, and the grounding portion, you put this in the ground and step on it, and then you're able to connect your fence just like so. You just slide the fence controller right into place, and it sits on the stand. In other words, this is a totally self-contained unit that you do not have to drive a ground rod for. You do have to drive a ground rod for these. That's enough of my advice on these two controllers. I'm very, very happy with both controllers, but for reliability purposes, I've found that Premier One has been best, and for getting parts and stuff like that, I know I can contact Premier One, and I've contacted Zariba, and they referred me out to other places. Once again, folks, I want to make mention, I am in no way associated with Zariba brand fence controllers. This is layperson advice. If you get hurt doing this, then it's your own fault. It's not mine. I'm going to show you how I take it apart. So back here are two panels. This panel comes off and it has batteries in here. This panel right here comes off and it has a circuit board and controller in here. That circuit board and controller translates to the front here where you have your two leads and you have your little shocker. This one is functioning properly and when you turn it on, it has a summer and winter setting. Where is that switch? There it is. When you turn it on, you should hear it pop and you'll see a flash. There we go. Trust me, there's a little flash. There's a little light bulb, and we'll show you that once we get the circuit board out. So we're gonna turn this off. There we go. And basically the difference in the summer and the winter, I think, is the output. I think it puts out a little less power in the winter time than it does in the summertime because in the summertime it would have to contend with grass and weeds and stuff like that. So this is the T10 Torx. And this is just a Craftsman brand that I use. Basically, it just comes apart. Now, these aren't machine screws. These are like a wood screw almost, or a plastic type screw. We'll take this guy apart. Here's a little tip, guys. If you've got a screw that's down in a deep hole and you wanna magnetize your screwdriver or your Torx in this case, all you have to do is set it on a powerful magnet for just a few minutes, or a few seconds, really, and then you're able to pick up Whatever you want to pick up, it'll be magnetized. Now the magnetization doesn't last too awful long, but it does work for just a little bit long enough for you to get that screw out that's stubborn and stuck in there. Now underneath here should be the battery compartment. You can see this wire right here. There's a little notch cut out for the wire, and that is the power supply from the solar panel back here. Don't be afraid. You're not going to hurt anything. Get down here and kind of pry up with your fingers, and you'll just pry them right up and off. This covers our batteries, and this covers our circuit board. So I had it backwards. Right here is our circuit board. We're gonna get a little bit closer look at it. I took this one apart just for an example to show you how simple these are. So if you're gonna work on this device or you're gonna replace batteries, the first thing I would suggest is just going on and pulling off the battery terminals just like so. They just slip right off, and I tape mine up. So whatever's exposed, the negatives are exposed, I went on and taped those up. Right here is our circuit board. It'll get you a little close up, and you can see there's a little bit of a spider's nest or something in there. I want to get that out. That's what the problem with our other circuit board was. 
ants had made a nest across right here. So you want to get this up off the ground far enough that ants can't nest inside here and cause a short on your circuit board. So inside here, everything is very, very simple. This is a very simple circuit board. You have some transformers in here and you have a capacitor in here that stores energy from the batteries and sends that little spark out to your electric fence. Now contrary to what you may think, an electric fence does not have a constant stream of power. It sends a pulse of power. And that's what happens inside this circuit board. It's designed to save up power in the capacitor and send that pulse, boom, down the line, boom, down the line. It's a low amperage, high voltage system. Now in order to remove this circuit board, you first need to go on this side and you need to remove these two pins and it's very very simple just take the nuts loose from these pins the next thing you need to remove is this torx that's right here in the center of the circuit board so you'll take this guy loose very very simple and the entire circuit board will come out folks that's all that's inside a fence controller this little circuit board that i'm getting ready to take out right here that some people might fuss because i'm touching with my bare hands but this little circuit board and on the back side of that circuit board is the little light that i was talking about and that's the little light that you see flashing indicating that your fence controller is working properly be sure if you're doing something like this and you don't know whether you're going to have to order parts use that phone those pictures are free take pictures all along the way if you're doing something if you're rebuilding something use that phone be smart so i've already removed my nuts from the front of the circuit board and this is what comes out this is the way it comes out we'll get you a little close up it comes out like this and it still has the switch assembly on it right here so i'll have to pull the switch assembly off of these tabs and install it onto those tabs should be pretty simple might have to put a little bit of grease on there to get her done thing is on there baby <laughs> well, what I just did was probably not ideal, but it worked. <laughs> there we go, baby. So we got it off there. Now we'll slide it on the new one. Once again, I'm so glad I have this here because I should have looked at the way this thing's laid out before I took it apart. It's really simple, but man, I could have messed it up again. <laughs> Let me show you how this goes back together. So this has four little electrical connections and a switch on it right here. And this has the four electrical connections. And basically we just put them together and we press down just like so. Let's give you a close up of what the problem was. So ants had built a nest right across here and shorted this little guy out. Probably a simple electronics repair guy could fix this for me. And this is about a hundred dollar part, maybe a little bit more than a hundred bucks. Okay, reverse order of installation. We have a little switch tab. And that little switch tab goes right here and that's your summer and your winter switch right there. We're gonna put it right in the center and then we're gonna set down our circuit board appropriately lining up our little switch we're not going to tighten it all the way down just yet we're not quite ready for that we want it in there just a little loose and then we're going to take these two guys and these are the leads that will go through the machine out the front and that's what you'll hook your positive and your negative to so we'll drop those right down into these little holes just like so hopefully you can see that drop those guys right in there now we're holding these in place and each one of these has this little locking kind of washer that goes on there. Very simple. And then we'll start, I believe it's a little quarter inch nut. And once we get that nut started on there, we can go ahead and release the backside and we don't have to worry so much. We will torque this nut down, not too awfully tight, probably about 10 pounds, something like that. Torque those two nuts down and then we'll slide on our washers. These washers go just like this, another washer like that, and then this is ground, so this will get the green, and this other side will get the red. So you don't ruin your circuit board. You need to pull these and turn them and set them in place because the circuit board is set up with a little square area that will drop those guys back into place. Then we'll just tighten them down a little bit, and 
will basically be done replacing the circuit board. We'll go ahead and put our batteries back in and we need to set this thing out in the sunshine. So these things need to get some sunshine. If you're going to store them in your shop or your garage, then you need to store them near a window so that they can keep a little bit of charge trickling on those batteries. Because if you leave them alone, you're going to be replacing lead acid batteries and that's no fun. I think the battery replacement cost is somewhere around $50 to $100 for both batteries. That's a bit expensive. So there's a little plastic wing tab that slides right into place over top of these little connectors to protect them. Basically slides right in there and protects those two little tabs. And I'll pull it out so you can see it. There we go. So those are the two little tabs we just tightened down and that's a protector that holds it in place. Now the screw that holds the cover over top of this holds that in place. So the circuit board serves as a charging system and a discharging system. In other words, there's a charging system to feed the batteries to make sure that they stay charged and a discharging system to send out pulses of electricity to your fence. Pretty cool. Now if you've got a Zariba brand fence controller like this and you're having troubles with it, I'd say the first thing you need to check is your battery system. So make sure that your batteries are good. What we did is we took good batteries and put in here and we found that we still had the same problem. So check the simplest thing first and then go to the more complicated thing. Contact Zariba if you need to replace your circuit board and they can refer you to the next guy down the line that hopefully will send it to you. What they're going to do is try to get you to take this in and have it repaired, which is probably going to cost you just about as much as the piece of equipment cost you when you bought it. Now we're going to turn it on and listen. It's working. Awesome. And it didn't blow up. <laughs> so guys, basically we're going to install the covers here. I hope you learned a little bit about fence controllers, about what you need to think about with fence controllers. If it were me and I had a power system at the place I'm doing my electric fence, I would definitely use one that I could plug in. If you want a little bit less maintenance for a place that's very rural, out in the middle of nowhere, and you want to have power to your fence, like a deer food plot or something like that, I recommend one like this with the solar panel with the battery setup. Also the fence controller that works on DC voltage so you can hook a deep cycle marine battery to it and it'll run for weeks and weeks and weeks. You'll just have to judge off the power of your marine battery and just go over and check it every so often to make sure that it's still working properly and if you need to charge your battery bring it home, charge it up, set it out there, should be good to go for another month or so cool stuff. Guys, thanks a lot. I hope you learned a little bit about fence controllers. I hope you learned a little bit about disassembly, reassembly, battery replacement, circuit board replacement, and all this fun stuff here in the shop today. So come on back and see us on the Stony Ridge Farm. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you don't have a fence controller and you're just watching this, just having fun watching me work, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate you. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge. Woo! Land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm proud of who I am. You say you're leaving on a 7.30 train and that you're headed out to Hollywood.